As a teenager, when I asked my parents' permission to go to my first mixed party, they hummed and hawed. What were they afraid of? Afraid I'd fall in love? Be seduced by an older man? At the party, I did fall in love. It was less rock and roll, more sit around and chat sort of party. All evening you whispered in my ear. All night your voice echoed in my head. I was smitten, head over heels. And you feed me tea and oranges that come all the way from China. You told me about the sisters, and I touched the dew on their hem. When we had to part, I thought, hey, that's no way to say goodbye. But you said, so long, it's time we began. I was in love with you, Leonard, twenty years my senior. You were born in Montreal, Canada, in 1934, to a Jewish couple of European origin. Your father, Nathan Cohen, died when you were just nine. You loved words. You loved poetry. Yeats, Whitman, Lorca were your favourites. At university, you were president of the debating union. You listened to a rainbow of music, folk, R&B, country, jazz cabaret. Before you ever produced a record, you had published several books of poetry and two novels. But you know all that. What you don't know is that I've followed you across continents and decades. And you tell me, I was born like this, I had no choice. I was born with the gift of a golden voice. I am happy that you share that gift with us. I've followed you, Leonard. I've been to Montreal, but didn't see you there. I travelled to the Greek Isle of Idra, but you'd already left. I've been to New York to the Chelsea Hotel, but not at the moment you were there with Janis Joplin. I didn't follow you to Mount Baldy Zen Centre outside LA for your five-year seclusion and devotion to Buddhism. That was a step too far. But I love you in the morning, your kisses deep and warm. There have been other women in your life, I know. Suzanne, Marianne, Heather, Jane in your songs. And Janie Thomas, the incomparable Sharon Robinson and the sublime Webb sisters share your singing life. You are hard to follow, elusive. You were 13 years out of the public eye until that day at a book signing in Toronto when you sang two songs for a crowd of 3,000 thirsty for your words. I loved you when you opened like a lily to the heat. You revealed yourself on screen in the film Leonard Cohn, I'm Your Man, and once again I could stand before the Lord of Song, along with others, Nick Cave, Rufus Wainwright and Bono who revere you. Politically you're an observer, cynical maybe about our disinterest, I am neither left or right, I'm staying home tonight, getting lost in that hopeless little screen. You've written about love. You've written about war, democracy, fear, sex, oppression, depression, but also about abiding hope. The birds they sang at the break of day, start again, I heard them say. In sadness, defeat, in darkness, you never lost your humour, Leonard, your wry, impish smile as you sing. I ache in the places where I used to play. Your self-deprecating self. I'm old, but I'm still into that. Been working out, but it's too late. It's been too late for years. You're a Jew, a Christian, a Buddhist, the little Jew who wrote the Bible. You know you are born with the gift of a golden voice, and you've been using it in poetry and song. Some would say you've had a golden life, but you've been laid low by depression, been robbed of your savings by an ex-manager who fought you in the courts. In 2008, to recoup some money for retirement, you gave yourself in concerts, your trim figure dancing, doffing a fedora to friends gathered on the other side of intimacy. You didn't look like a guy heading for the retirement home. You said, thank you, when it is we who should be grateful for your words, your music, your spirit. In Kilmainham, 
I yielded to the flood of your beauty. On that moonlit night, which threatened rain but didn't. My daughter texted from abroad, Enjoy, L.C., bet you're wearing your famous blue raincoat. I looked down, yes, a raincoat, yes, it was blue. In the newly refurbished O2 Stadium in Dublin, you skipped onto stage. A kid of 74 with a crazy dream to sing for friends and apologise for not dying. You were enjoying the gigs. Thank you for not giving up. 2010 was supposed to be the year we all cut back, stopped the extravagancies. So, Leonard, when your concert date was announced, I resisted. In six minutes, all tickets were sold out. As if to taunt me, they announced a second date. Again, my sensible side held off. But there is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light comes in. And the light came by email from an old school friend now based in Chicago. I've bought us tickets to Leonard in Lissadell, she wrote. Hallelujah, I replied. I'll be there, holding up this little wild bouquet. You chose Lissadell, that old Georgian mansion so loved by Yeats, to murmur your poetry to us in the evening light of Drumcliff Bay. And before you appeared to sing for us, you visited your hero's grave, where no doubt like him, you cast a cold eye on life, on death. You signed the visitor's book there, Leonard Cohn, Montreal. And as always, your adjectives are superlatives, so you added, sublime. Walking in the house, previously owned by the Gorbooth family, I imagine you might have whispered, I've been here before, I know this room, I've walked this floor. And looking out those great windows to the south, maybe you said, tonight will be fine, will be fine, will be fine. In concert you told us, I did my best, it wasn't much, I couldn't feel so I learned to touch. I've told the truth, I didn't come to Yeats country just to fool you. We came in our thousands, Leonard, this August weekend, to stand before the Lord of Song, and Yeats's ghost hovered over the stage at Lissadell, where you spoke his words. The light of evening, Lissadell, great windows open to the south, two girls in silk kimonos, both beautiful, one a gazelle, a master poet saluting another great master. But you were the gazelle of Lissadell springing onto stage. The sun warmed us from behind the stands. Gulls danced above in your honour, and evening was full of the linnet's wings. I looked left to Ben Bulban. It glowed warm and pink as you sang Ring the Bells. And the sun poured down like honey on Our Lady of the Harbour. Your voice rang to Drumcliff where Yeats surely approved of your poetry. The atmosphere was light, warm, nostalgic. You thanked us, your friends, for our hospitality. You said you would give us everything you had, as you mightn't pass this way again. But it was during, if it be your will, that I shed a tear. That one could write a poem prayer so beautiful that it can move me every time I hear it and that you can, with all sincerity, mean every word you wrote. One could hear a pin drop in Lissadell, while we, your ten thousand friends, listened to your message and hoped that your voice would never be still. If it be your will that I speak no more, and my voice be still, as it was before. <laughs>